chapters 19 through 24 of the first book of Samuel from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. The first book of Samuel, chapters 19 through 24. Chapter 19. Saul consequently ordered his son Jonathan and all his officers to kill David, but Jonathan, Saul's son, had a great admiration for David, so Jonathan informed David, telling him, My father Saul is trying to get you killed, so look out now in the morning and keep yourself in the house and do not come out, but I will go and station myself beside my father at the parade where you should be, and I will talk about you to my father and will watch the result and report it to you. Jonathan accordingly spoke well about David to his father Saul, and said to him, Do not let the king hurt David, his officer, for he has not injured you, but has done you very great services. For he put his life in his hand, and assailed the Philistim. The ever-living effected a great victory for all Israel, and you saw it, and were glad. So why now sin against innocent blood by killing David without a cause? Saul listened to the voice of Jonathan, and Saul swore, by the life of the Lord, he shall not be killed. Jonathan afterwards went to David and reported to him the whole conversation. Jonathan also brought David to Saul, and he associated with him as formerly. When there was war again, David went out and fought with the Philistim, and defeated them with a crushing defeat, so that they fled before him. Then the evil spirit from the ever-living came upon Saul, and he sat in his room with his javelin in his hand, while David was playing. And Saul tried to pin David with his javelin to the wall, but he rushed from Saul's presence, and the javelin fastened itself in the wall. So David fled and hid himself that night. Saul, however, sent troops to David's house to keep watch and kill him in the morning. But Michal, his wife, informed David, saying, if you do not save your life tonight, you will be killed tomorrow. So Michal let David down out of a window, and he successfully escaped and hid himself. Then Michal took the teraphim and put them on the bed with a goat's beard laid for its beard, and covered it with clothing. So when Saul sent his guards to seize David, she said, uh, He is ill. Saul, however, sent messengers to see David himself, saying, Bring him on his bed to me that I may kill him. But when the messengers came, they found the teraphim in the bed, with a goat's beard on its face. Then Saul demanded of Michal, Why have you deluded me thus, and let my enemy escape from me and hide himself? And Michal answered Saul, He said to me, Let me escape, or I will kill you. Thus David escaped and hid himself, and went to Samuel at Ramah, and informed him of all Saul had done to him. There he stayed with Samuel, and they resided in the residency but it was reported to Saul that David was at the residency at Ramah. Saul consequently sent messengers to arrest David, but when they saw the company of reciters reciting, and Samuel standing up directing them, the divine spirit came upon Saul's messengers, and they themselves recited. And they reported it to Saul, who sent other messengers, but they also recited. Saul, however, again sent messengers a third time, and they also recited. Then he went himself to Ramah, and when he came to the great cistern that is at Sika, he asked, inquiring, Where are Samuel and David? And was told, They are at his house near Ramah. But when he went to the house near Ramah, then the divine spirit came upon him also, and he went dancing and reciting until he came to the residency at Ramah. He also tore off his clothes, and himself recited before Samuel, and fell down naked there all that day and all that night. From this comes the saying, Is Saul also among the reciters? Chapter 20 Then David removed from the residency at Ramah, and appeared before Jonathan, asking him, What have I done? What is my fault? And how have I offended your father that he seeks my life? And he replied to him, Be calm, you shall not be killed. Look, my father does nothing great or little that he does not communicate to my ears. Then why should my father hide this affair? It cannot be so. But David swore even, and said, He knows, your father knows that I have found favor in your eyes. So he says, Let not Jonathan know this, for fear he should be grieved. 
but however by the life of the ever-living and by the life of your soul what defense is there between me and death then jonathan asked david what do you demand about your life and i will provide it for you and david replied to jonathan you know to-morrow is new moon and i should sit with a king to dine but i will withdraw and keep myself in the country until the third evening if your father inquires for me you must say david asked me permission to run to bethlehem his village for it is the set time for all his clan to sacrifice there if he then says good there is safety for your servant but if it angers him you will know that evil has been determined by him now act kindly to your friend for you have made a bond of the ever-living between your friend and yourself but if i have offended kill me yourself for why should you betray me to your father then jonathan answered go away calm yourself and if i find that injury is intended to be brought upon you from my father i will come to you but david replied to jonathan whatever he said to me or may assert to you your father is determined when jonathan replied to david come and we will go into the fields so they both went to the fields where jonathan said to david by the ever-living the god of israel i will search out my father by this time at three days after to-morrow and find if he is good towards david and if he is not i will send to you and whisper it to you the lord do so to jonathan and more than that if what is pleasant to my father is bad for you i will inform you of it and send you away and you shall depart in safety may the ever-living be with you as he has been with my father therefore you must not whilst i live ever fail to show me the mercy of the ever-living and not kill me let not your mercy cease from my family for ever not even when the ever-living cuts off every single enemy of david from the face of the earth for jonathan makes a treaty with the house of david and the ever-living will inquire for it from the hand of david's enemies then jonathan proceeded to swear david by his friendship for him for he loved him as the friend of his life jonathan also said to him to-morrow is new moon so guard yourself for your house will be watched but upon the third day come down cautiously and go to the place where you hid yourself on the day of sacrifice and seat yourself at the side of the rock of azel and i will shoot three arrows at random with a pretense of exercising myself at the butts then i will send my lad to go seek the arrows but if i say to the youth look the arrows are near you then get yourself up and come for you will be safe and there is nothing as the lord lives but if i say to the boy look out for the arrows are beyond you and further on you must fly for the ever-living sends you away the bond we have bound ourselves by you and i remember for the ever-living is the intermediary between myself and you for ever david consequently hid himself in the fields when the new moon came the king sat down to table to dine and the king sat on his usual seat by the wall when jonathan came up but abner had seated himself at the table of saul who missed the presence of david saul however said nothing himself about it that day for he reflected something has happened to him perhaps he is not clean he has not been ready when the second day after the new moon came and he still missed the presence of david saul asked jonathan his son why has not the son of jesse come to-day as formerly to dine and jonathan replied to saul david asked me if he might go to bethlehem and said permit me i pray for our clan sacrifices in that village and my brother has sent for me and so if i have found favor in your sight allow me i pray for i wish to see my brothers that is why he has not come to the king's table but saul was furious with jonathan and exclaimed to him you young son of rebellion do i not know that you have chosen the son of jesse to your own dishonor and to the dishonor of your mother's shame for as long as the son of jesse exists above ground your leadership will not be secured and now you have sent and taken him from me nevertheless he is a son of death jonathan however answered saul his father and said to him why should he die what has he done then saul threw his javelin at him to stab him so jonathan knew that his father had decided upon the death of david so jonathan arose from the table with fury and ate no food the second day of the new moon for he was grieved about david because his father had thus determined but when dawn came jonathan went out to the field to meet david and a little lad with him and he said to his lad run find the arrows i shoot the boy ran so he shot an arrow to pass over him when the lad came to the place to which the arrow had been shot by jonathan jonathan called after the lad and said halloo is not my arrow there beyond you 
Jonathan also called after the lad, Make haste, be quick, don't dawdle. So the lad picked up the arrows of Jonathan and came to his master. The lad, however, knew nothing about the affair. Jonathan and David, however, understood the thing. Then Jonathan gave his weapons to his boy and said to him, Go, return to the town. The lad went, and David got up from his hiding place, and bending his face to the earth, bowed three times, and both kissed as friends, and both wept as friends, until David was overcome. Then Jonathan said to David, Go in the peace that we both have sworn to by the name of the ever-living, saying, The ever-living shall be between me and you, and between my descendants and your descendants for ever. Chapter 21 then he arose and departed, and Jonathan returned to the town. David then went to Achimelech, the priest, at Nob, but Achimelech hesitated to receive David, and asked him, Why are you alone, and no one with you? So David answered Achimelech the priest, The king ordered me on a business, and said to me, Let no one know what the business is on which I send you, nor what I have ordered you. So I appointed another place for my men, and now what have you got here? Give me those five cakes, or I shall take them myself. But the priest replied to David and said, It is not common bread that is under my care, but consecrated bread. If the young men have kept themselves, however, from women. And David answered the priest and said, Women have not approached us for three days since I set out. The accouterments of the men are clean, and the way open, and indeed my accouterments were cleaned that day. Then the priest gave him the consecrated bread, for he had no other bread there except the bread of the presentation taken away from the piles before the ever-living to be replaced by hot bread on the day that he took it. There was, however, at the same time an officer of Saul's resting before the ever-living, named Doeg the Edomite, the chief of Saul's shepherds. And David asked Achimelech, is there not here in your custody a spear or sword? For I could not bring my sword or my arms with me, for the order of the king was very urgent. The priest replied, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom you defeated on the plain of Hala, is here, wrapped in a cloth behind his armor. If you will take that, take it, for there is not another except it here. And David replied, There is none like it. Give it to me. Then David arose and fled at once from the neighborhood of Saul, and went to Achish, king of Gath. But the officers of Achish said to him, Is not this David the leader of the country? Was it not about him they sang in the dances, saying, Saul has defeated his thousands, but David his ten thousands? And David put these words into his heart, and was very terrified in the presence of Achish, king of Gath. So he altered his way of talking in their sight, and acted the fool towards them, and scribbled on the panels of the doors, and dribbled his spittle on his beard. Akish consequently said to his officers, You see the man is mad? Why have you brought him to me? Have I need of fools that you have brought this one to me to play the fool for me? Let him get out of my house. Chapter 22 then David went from that place, and took refuge in the caves of Adullam, and his relatives heard of it, and they and all his father's family went down to him there. And every man in distress, and every man in debt, and every man of discontented mind collected to him, and he became a captain over them, until there were about four hundred men with him in the caves. But David went from there to Mitzvah of Moab, and said to the king of Moab, I beg you to allow my father and mother to be with you until I learn what God will do with me. So the king of Moab granted it, and they stayed with him all the time that David was in the stronghold. Then Gad the reciter said to David, Do not remain in this stronghold, but go to the land of Judah. So David went and came to the wood of Kareth. Saul, however, heard this, for David and the men who were with him were known, and Saul was resting on a hill under a tamarisk tree in Ramah, with his spear in his hand, and all his officers were standing about him. So Saul said to the officers who were around him, Listen now, all you sons of thieves. I gave to the son of Jesse farms and vineyards as I did to all of you. I made you my colonels of regiments and my captains of companies. So why have you, all of you, conspired against me, and not opened my ears to the agreement of my son with the son of Jesai, 
and have you not shown it to me or informed me that my son had set my slave above myself secretly as he is to-day then doeg the edomite replied he stood amongst the ministers of saul and said i saw the son of jesse go to noba to achimelech the son of achitub who inquired for him of the ever-living and gave him provisions and handed him also the sword of goliath the philistine the king consequently sent and summoned Achimelech ben Achitub the priest, and the whole of the priests of his father's family who were in Noba, and they all came to the king, when Saul said, Listen now, ben Achitub, and he replied, I am here, my prince. Then Saul asked him, Why did you, you and the son of Jesse, hide from me that you supplied him with bread and a sword, and inquired for him of God to rise against me in secret as he now does? But Achimelech answered the king and said, Who of all your officers should be more honorably trusted than David, a royal son-in-law, and the chief of your subjects and the most honored of your family? Upon the day when I danced to inquire of God for him, I did dance. Let not the king bring trouble upon his servant with all my father's family, for your servant knew nothing of all this affair, little or great. The leader, however, replied, you shall die achimelech you and all your father's family and the leader commanded the guards around him to turn upon them and slay the priests of the ever-living for helping david and because knowing of his flight they had not informed him but the officers of the king would not go would not extend their hands to strike the priests of the ever-living then the leader said to doeg get up and fall upon the priests so Doeg the Edomite turned and fell upon the priests himself, and killed on that day eighty-five men, men who bore the ephods only. He also assailed Nob, the towns of the priests, with the edge of the sword, both men and women, child and infant, and ox and ass and sheep, he massacred. But one son of Achimelech ben Achitub escaped, whose name was Abiathar, and fled to David, and Abiathar informed David how Saul had murdered the priests of the ever-living. And David said to Abiathar, I knew on that day when Doeg the Edomite was there that he would inform Saul, I am responsible for all the lives of your father's family. Stay with me, fear not, for he who seeks my life seeks yours as well, so you have a place of safety with me. Chapter 23 they reported once to David, saying, The Philistim are besieging Keilah and destroying the cornfields. So David inquired of the ever-living, asking, Shall I assail and defeat those Philistim? And the ever-living answered David, Go and defeat the Philistim and relieve Keilah. But David's men said to him, Look you, we are in terror here in Judah, so why should we go to Keilah to fight the regulars of the Philistim? Therefore David repeated the inquiry to the ever-living, when the ever-living answered, Arise, march to Keilah, for I will give the Philistim into your power. David and his men then marched to Keilah and fought with the Philistim, and captured their baggage train and defeated them with great slaughter. Thus David saved the inhabitants of Keilah. And when Abiathar ben Achitub followed David to Keilah, he took the ephod with him. It was, however, reported to Saul that David had come to Keilah, so Saul remarked, God has betrayed him into my power, for he is prevented by doors and bars from leaving the town. Saul therefore ordered all his forces for war to descend to Keilah to assail David and his men. But David had intelligence that Saul was planning evil against him, so he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring the ephod here. Then David prayed, ever-living God of Israel, listen, listen to your servant, for Saul seeks to advance upon Keilah to destroy the town because of me. Will the headmen of Keilah deliver me into his power? Will Saul descend as your servant has heard? Living God of Israel, inform your servant, I pray. The ever-living answered, He will descend. Then David asked, Will the headmen of Keilah deliver me and my men into the power of Saul? And the ever-living replied, They will deliver. Consequently David and his men, about six hundred persons, arose and went out from Keilah and dispersed as they could. And it was reported to Saul that David had escaped from Keilah, so he stopped his advance. 
Then David stayed in the dens of the desert, and occupied a hill in the desert of Ziph, and Saul hunted him all his days, but God gave him not into his power. David also knew when Saul came out to seek him, but David kept in concealment in the desert of Ziph. Jonathan, however, the son of Saul, arose and went to David secretly, and cheered him up in God, and said to him, Fear not, for the hand of my father Saul will not catch you, and you will be the leader of Israel, and I will be your lieutenant. My father Saul also knows this. Then both of them made a treaty before the ever-living, but David continued in hiding, and Jonathan returned to his home. The Ziphites, however, went up to Saul to Gibeah to say, do you not know that David is hiding with us in a fort concealed among the hills of Kakaila, on the south of the desert? So now, with all the energy of your soul, commander, come down, and we will deliver him to the commander's hand. When Saul answered, May you be blessed by the ever-living for your kindness to me. Go, I pray, ascertain further, and learn, and watch the places that he haunts, who sees him there, for they tell me he is very crafty. Examine and learn also about all the hiding places where he haunts, and report them to me accurately. Then I will come to you, and if he is skulking about in the country, I will chase him with all the regiments of Judah. They accordingly arose and went from the audience with Saul to Ziph. But David and his men were then in the desert of Maon, in the waste to the south of the desert, where Saul and his men marched in pursuit. But David received intelligence of it, and came down from the hill fort and rested in the desert of Maon. Saul, however, heard of this, and pursued after David to the desert of Maon. But Saul marched on one side of the hill, and David and his men on the other side of the hill, with David hurrying in his march from the approach of Saul. For Saul and his men wished to surround David and his men, and capture them. Then a messenger rushed to Saul, saying, Make haste and march, for the Philistim have burst into the country. Saul therefore ceased the pursuit after David, and went to encounter the Philistim, in consequence of which that place is called the Peak of Turnagain. Chapter 24 From there David went and settled in the fort of Engeli. Again when Saul returned from after the Philistim, he was informed that David was in the desert of Engeli. So Saul took three thousand men, the choice of all Israel, and marched to seek David and his men in the high peaks of Jalim. When he came to the sheepfolds by the road, where there is a cave, Saul went in to rest his feet. But David and his men were in the backward reaches of the caves. Then David's men said to him, Now is the time that the ever-living said to you, I will put your enemy into your power, and you can do to him whatever is good in your eyes. So David arose and took away the embroidered quilt with which Saul was covered. But afterwards David's heart reproved him for taking away the quilt which was on Saul, and he said to his men, Trouble will come to me from the ever-living if I do such a thing to my prince, to the Lord's anointed, as to lay my hand upon him, for he has been consecrated to the ever-living. David consequently restrained his men from action and would not allow them to attack Saul. So Saul left the cave and proceeded on his way. Then David got up and went out of the cave, and called after Saul, and said, My lord, commander! When Saul looked behind him, David bent his face earthward and bowed to him. David then said to Saul, Why do you listen to the tales of the man who says, David seeks to do you injury? Look, this very day your eyes can see that the ever-living gave you into my power in the cave, and they wished to murder you. But I pitied you, and said, I will not lift my hand against my prince, for he has been consecrated to the ever-living. And now, father, see, look, here is the embroidered quilt that covered you in my hand. I took the quilt away from you, but did not murder you. Know and be convinced, therefore, that there is no wrong in my hand, or rebellion, or sin against you. Yet you hunt for my life to take it. Let the ever-living decide between me and you, when the ever-living will acquit me rather than you, for my hand has not been against you. As the verse of the Kadmonite says, From the wicked wickedness springs, but my hand shall not be against you. After what does the commander of Israel come out? After what do you chase? After a dead dog, after a single flea. But let the ever-living be judge and decide between me and you, and examine my cause, and acquit me from you. And when David had finished uttering this address to Saul, Saul asked, Is that your voice, my son David? 
Then Saul lifted up his voice and wept, and said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me with benefit, but I have repaid you with violence. And further, you have shown it today by having acted kindly to me, for when the ever-living had delivered me to your power, you did not kill me. For when did a man find his enemy and helped him kindly on his way? The ever-living, however, will repay you generously in return for what you have done to me. And indeed I know that you will lead, and that the leadership of Israel will be fixed in your hand. Therefore swear to me by the ever-living not to destroy my descendants after me, not to blot out my name from my father's house. So David swore to Saul, and Saul went to his home, and David and his men went up to the fort. The end of chapters 19 through 24 of the first book of Samuel. Recording by Mark Penfold.